Oh hey, I'm Mark, a an art teacher, a professional artist, and in today's weekly Friday video, we're going to learn how to paint simple environments. Now, environments require a lot more skills than drawing characters, for example. So it is a lot harder, but if you follow along this tutorial, you will get better at it. Have I ever lied to you? Alright, so I heard you wanted to get better at drawing environments, or painting environments. If that's the case, well done, you're watching the right video. With that said, environments... Uh, environments are hard. It's a very, very complicated subject, there's a lot of different skills involved, and there's of course a limit as to what I can show you in the context of a shorter YouTube video like this, compared to, uh, well, the hours that I would spend with my students in my art program, for example. So what I'll be showing you today is a recipe, a recipe for an environment that you can follow and get very similar results. Or you can, you know, if you feel a little bit more confident, deviate from it, may exaggerate some parts, change some elements, play around with different colors, whatever you feel confident enough to do. But the kind of environment that I'm talking about here would be kind of your typical landscape based environment. So we're not going to be focusing on anything that has man-made structures which also means that there's not going to be any real mention of you know things like perspective lines vanishing a line vanishing points instead we'll keep it simple with something like uh, just mountains so in our background we're going to have smaller mountains they're not really smaller but we see them smaller because they're really far then we're going to have a middle ground or we're going to have bigger mountains once again not really bigger they're just closer to the camera so they appear bigger and then in the foreground we're going to have some something a little bit closer, maybe a part of a mountain, part of a cliff, so we can see a little bit more of the details because that is going to be the part of the painting that's closest to us. So real quick, a couple of notes about this uh, this painting here that we'll be doing, that we'll be tackling. Of course, something better than this, but we're going to start from the background and make our way towards the front of the painting. We're also going to have a landscape type of canvas or composition because this is going to allow us to show the, the vastness of the environment if you wanted to display or to feature something that's maybe a little bit more imposing you know, something that's tall really big in scale for example well you might be better off with a portrait type of canvas in that case but back to our generic uh, our recipe here the last thing that i haven't really mentioned is going to be the horizon line so when it comes to the horizon i usually recommend that you place it at, at the third in the painting so either at the third uh, towards the top of the painting or towards the bottom you can also do like halfway but that tends to look a little bit too too static a little boring now the difference between the two when it's high and when it's low it's uh, well it's the line that separates the sky and the earth right so if you have a lower horizon line it means that you're left with a lot more sky to paint sometimes that's great if you have a shot that maybe is looking up at something you might want to have your horizon lower so that you can feature more of the sky if that's important and with that established let's get started the very first thing that we'll be placing down on canvas is going to be our uh, horizon line in my case i'm choosing something that's a little bit uh, a little bit higher so i want to feature a little bit more of the ground than the sky and so i'm going to have my horizon line at the upper third line and then like i said we are going to be starting on our background what we're painting here is a like a plane full of tiny hills and with distance everything tends to shrink. Everything tends to get a little bit smaller the farther away it is from us. At least that's what we perceive. So starting from the back here, we're going to start with some very flat hills that don't stick out that much past the horizon line. Don't go below it though. And of course, I'm not going to leave everything white. Let's slap some colors in here. All right, and then we're ready to move on to the middle ground. So we're going to do something very similar. We'll just want to warm up the colors as we get closer and closer to the foreground. With distance, you'll want to add a little bit of a blue tint to everything. And uh, this completes our composition. So as you can see, very, very basic. But from here, we can add a lot of different things, such as this little path here. And that is going to basically start in the, in the foreground and travel through the entire piece and end somewhere in the background in the far distance. Right now we have all the building blocks that we need for our environment. We have our background with those mountains in the far distance in the sky. We have a middle ground and a foreground. And actually real quick, I'm going to add a little bit more to the middle ground. Add like another mountain up here because it's kind of empty without. All right, that's much better. 
And we even have the little path that goes all the way in the back. Now let's add a slight gradient to the sky so that it's not so just flat. All right, it's getting somewhere. And now the sky looks better, but the mountains themselves look really, really flat. So we're going to remedy to that and uh, basically shade them as if they were really, really big balls, big spheres. So you can kind of imagine like the top of the mountain here being like this huge sphere. We're going to have a, a sunlight coming from, well, the top of the image for sure, coming from the top right corner. So everything that's facing the sunlight, uh, the sun direction, maybe a little bit more directly, will get more of that light, we'll be able to capture more of that light. And beyond that, I decided to add a little bit more details to those mountains so that they're not just big spheres, and instead look a little bit more organic, a little bit more believable by having the crests and, and basically like smaller hills within the bigger shape. And now we have a really good base to get started and to add details to this and this is the fun part so i always like to start with a sketch and this is what we'll do here once again and that sketch is meant to be extremely rough and it's only really to try to figure out where we're going to place the different groups of plants nature is always random it's chaotic and so nothing is following any kind of real pattern especially not in a forest and so what we try to do here is spread out the different different groups of plants in a way that makes it look natural again if you don't know exactly and how you should do this and how much plants and what plants to even paint or if you want to paint something else you know it could be like a field of rock you know whatever look up references Either way, the idea with the sketch is just to spread things out and get kind of a good idea for the, the composition of all your smaller details. Next, once you're done with your sketch, you can move on to actually painting the colors. This should be on a separate layer and at the beginning, I'd recommend to not worry too much about the colors and the values and anything, anything like that. Just select a, a color that's a little bit darker than the grass. Usually plants are darker than grass. And well, place all your plants according to your sketch. At this stage is a really good time to, to whip out your, your custom brushes if you have any, or to create some, because this is the time consuming part of the process, right? Where we paint all the vegetation. If you have a million leaves in there to paint, that's gonna take you a while. So yeah, sometimes it makes sense to have a custom brush for that. And if you're looking for brushes, well, you can download my own. Find a link for that in the top right corner of the screen and down in the description below. Now, once you're done, spreading out your details, painting them in. Now it's time to lock your layer and focus on the value. So everything, like I've said at the beginning, everything that's in the far distance is going to be a slightly lighter, less contrast, and also a slight bluish tint. If you have a blue sky out, if you have like an overcast day, then the tint is going to be just white. It's the color of the sky. Once all your details are kind of laid out and you feel good about, you know, the overall composition of everything, now we can move on to lights. So the way that I like to apply the lights initially is to apply it onto the, each individual group of plants. So just like we've shaded our hills, you know, as big spheres, well, our plants are kind of like that. You know, you can think of all the different chunk of leaves as, as a big sphere and have all the leaves on one side of that sphere, the, the, the side facing the sun, be a little bit brighter. And everything else that's facing away from that is going to be a little bit darker. Warmer color for the highlights, cooler colors for the shadows. And once your plants start to feel a little bit more 3D, like they're not just flat brush strokes anymore, then we can start to look at the overall lighting for the scene. And that's where things can change a lot. So now I'm pretty happy with the spread of my details. It's very rough still, but it's a good time to move on to lights and really finalize the composition of our piece here. So what I like to do is create a new layer on top of everything and set it to hard light blending mode. Next, with a soft brush, we'll select like a nice blue, dark blue color and this is completely optional, of course, but I like to I like to paint over some regions of the of the landscape as if there were clouds in the sky covering the light of the sun. In my case, I don't have clouds yet, but we will add some later. But the overall lighting uh, tweaks here really allows us to focus on a particular plane, right? So right now it's very clear that my focus is on the foreground, not so much on the middle ground anymore. Once again, usually the focus tends to be where the light is. And then once I'm happy with that, I can uh, finally add the missing piece, which are, of course, the clouds. So having a nice, nice blue sky like this was too tempting. I couldn't resist. So I had, to, I had to toss some clouds in there. And then finally, I'm just going to wrap this up, this entire process by finalizing my details. So as you see me here, I'm using a couple of custom brushes to speed up details. But 
At this stage, most of the time, I like to brute force until the end, so I really like the, the more crafty, hand-painting look, but those are the final stages, so we really, really want to make uh, everything shine, add a lot of polish, make sure everything reads nicely, and yeah, really make it your own. So, after a little bit more work, uh, this is what I have here. So, yeah, I mean, still super rough, you know, it's probably not meant to be seen this close up. Uh, this is probably best seen at, at this kind of resolution, at like 12%. But all that would be left is just adding more and more detail so that you can zoom in and, and still be able to enjoy all the details. There's still a couple of things that I like to do uh, once I'm at this stage here. One is to help separate the planes. So in between each plane, I like to add a little bit of a a little bit of mist in between the, the mountains, so in the valleys, between the hills. Adding that little bit of mist, that, that brighter color, I feel like it really gives it a lot more depth. And then a couple more details, like flowers and things like that. And shadows too, that I was missing. Not much, just small stuff. And then some, uh, some final color adjustments and a little bit of a vignette effect. Nothing much, but uh, yeah, I think it's a little warmer now. Feels more sunny, feels uh, cozier. This is going to be the final image uh, for today. Of course, I could go in there and spend another another 20 hours detailing this stuff. So that looks really, really crisp, and we can zoom in and still be able to appreciate everything. But right now, we'll have to zoom out just a little bit like that for it to look decent. Also, just for fun, I decided to try and add a little bit more sky to see what this would look like. So this is what I get in the end. So yeah, I don't know. I think that was kind of cool. But yeah, there we have it. So this is uh, what we started with and with the details added. As you can see, I followed, you know, I followed my sketch pretty well. And uh, I'm kind of happy with the result. It's not bad. Could spend a lot more time on this, but uh, for the little amount of time that I invested in this painting, I'm fairly happy. Now, of course, you don't need to do anything this detailed. You know, you don't need to have as much stuff in here. From this point, it could be just a couple of a uh, couple of trees along the road, a couple of rocks maybe, or it could be like a desert with uh, like a little oasis. Or it, could, it could be mountains of snow. It could be really tall mountains instead of little plains like this. Either way, this process here should allow you to you know quickly come up with a couple of environments. And as you saw, the first steps really take no time at all. And so it's really from this point on what you do with it. So yeah, I had a lot of fun, and I'm really really looking forward to see uh, what you create if you try this tutorial. So please, please, please let me know. Tag me in your stories on Instagram and tag me on Twitter. I'm really curious to see what you guys are going to come up with. Remember though, always remember at any point, if you're not sure of how to paint something, Google references. You don't learn anything unless you're using references. Now then, I hope you have fun trying out this little tutorial. As usual, let me know down in the comments below if you have any ideas for a future tutorial like this. More often than not, I tend to select the one that's upvoted the most in my previous videos. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like.